was um, about requests for information, freedom of information requests. And how to do it, and how to succeed, and, and why you should persevere. And Well, the other good point was that Scotland seems to have a fairly robust system. Mm. Um, there was a guy from Ireland there. And oh, he was guy. good, wasn't he? Gavin. He was very good, yeah. Well, Gavin's, Gavin's blog.ie, recommended. He was red hot. Over in Ireland, you've got to pay for each <laughs> yes. request. Which and I can remember 15, 75 and 150 euros, depending on what level you have to go to to get your information. He made a big point of that. Yeah, I mean, he was saying that they brought in, you see, they've had a freedom of information in Ireland for 14 years, but it's, it's only about six years in, in Scotland. And uh, it's still free here, and it started free over there. But halfway along the road, the Irish decided to start charging, they were getting too many. Uh, and But this guy is a real terrier, he's kind of turned it round because you're, you're paying for it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've got more rights to ask, in a sense. Anyway, there was a, he, he was... He does trawling, doesn't he? Yeah, he basically what he does is he gets databases, but he also publishes them publishes all, everything online. Completely. So he allows his blog followers basically to go through and says it's very effective. They pick out things and they make links that he has no way of making, like Mr. Smith is Mr. Jones's cousin. So um, it's real freedom of information, it's going out to everybody. Which was the other big thing that um, all the guys that use it, uh, one of the first things they ask for is the log of requests of freedom of information. That's right, so you ask how many freedom of information requests have you had and where's the log of it, you know? And where are they? That can tell you an awful lot. Yeah, and well the other sort of tie to that is it appears that one of the ways they have of stopping the information going public is by saying there are certain things you can't publish due to copyright and blah blah blah. Whereas in Ireland this this guy just ignores it all and publishes everything. Good luck to him. Publish and be damned. Well, he did admit that uh, personal information, telephone numbers, emails, etc. He redacts stuff himself. Do yeah. they have an extradition treaty with America? Because you better watch out, you know, like here, you know, otherwise they'll be shipping them all over yeah, to America well, to be put in prison. The American guy made a very good point that it went state by state um, as well as Isn't the federal state? government. Yeah. And that um, they all had kind of different ways of blocking you. Um, we had two of the, the most successful um, Scottish FOI searchers there, Andy Whiteman and um, Rob Edwards. Rob Edwards is a journalist, writes in the Herald yeah, and so Guardian. Plays in Guardian, very important man in that field. And uh, Andy Whiteman, the green man and all about property law in Scotland. So between the two of them, they put in loads, so there was a lot of very useful stuff. Um, it's not my line, to be honest. I think I get the feeling that if you have to go down the road of a freedom of information request, it can take quite a long time before you get the information. Well, that, that was of two years. But Scotland seems to be pretty robust. Um, as you pointed out this morning, the, the new, the new lady, woman, yeah. lady in charge. No, we can't tell whether she's being robust or not. She certainly found in favour of the whoever was seeking the information, found against the Scottish government who were apparently resisting the Scottish government are saying that we won't we won't tell you whether we've got we've had legal advice about entering Europe or not. Um, and should we become independent? Should we become independent? So they're not even admitting there is any advice, but they've been told they've got to say whether there is or isn't advice. I don't think they've been told yet to say what the advice is, but they've been told to admit if they've got it. Were well, they discussing at all about well, particularly Blair and Straw? now basically saying that they wish they hadn't and it was funny the, well, that's true, yes. the terminology that Blair that was, used that, that which it. was really sort of antiquated arcane and sort of Winnie the Poohish when he said oh I was a nincompoop any regrets? No, he's a mass murderer. No, no, he doesn't regret it was his biggest regret. His biggest yeah. regret yeah. was yeah. FOI. But what, a strange, what a strange kind of terminology for such a horrible individual to use. It's, it's one of those ones that what kind of came out of it at the end, which surprised me, is we, the argument's sort of been won. 
and local government especially has been encouraged to publish a lot more information. Perhaps they publish everything, it's simpler. Yeah, yeah. And then they don't have to go digging and so on. Where, where it becomes a problem for me is you're going to focus on what isn't given out. Yeah. And there are, I mean, there's, there are going to be good reasons mm. for some of it. But what would be a lot simpler is, quite simply, if you had a trustworthy independent body that went, before you had to make any application for information, went, yep, yeah, you can publish that, you can publish that, you can publish that. No, you can't publish that. That would cut down the amount of information that wasn't coming out, and you could focus any request for that information in that area. Whereas now, you, you have to find out what you need to find out <laughs> Before you make, but I think this guy, this guy Gavin the Irishman, um, he was trolling. He just get downloads all gets, yeah, well, that's gets all like this information and looks for some, for stories. Whereas normally most journalists have a story in mind and go specifically looking for the information. Well, see, I have a bit of problems with that. I mean, he's probably doing it for the best of interest, you know, the best of reasons. Um, but then you do get some of the nastier papers that do all this just basically digging up. Gossip, was it something. It was so it's about, yeah. cheap. So it's not, to my mind, a lot. Of, it's not really investing in journalists. It's lazy. Get the government to do anything. See if you can find any dirt. See if you can put a spin on it. Um, see if you can make something that it isn't. I mean, there, 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 there's definite scope there for abuse on it. And I'm just wondering if that's one of the reasons that the Irish put a price on it. You know, well, started to make a charge because you can. When people do it for, if you're actually looking for information. You know, um, and all the rest of information about something specific, which you think that that's fine. But when you just actually do a kind of a, a Sun or a Daily Star or a Daily Mail thing, let's see what uh, we can Phil, find. But Phil, the most interesting bit about it for me was the fact that he was making it all, all that, and I mean, it's a huge amount of information. Making it all public allowed people who knew things you don't know to make the connections. That makes more sense. Plus, you know. And the other crucial point about that was it wasn't just publishing things, it was scanning all the paper documents he got and putting them online. And he was saying that the impact of putting actual receipts, expenses claims, yeah. the paper claims up online was incredibly, you know, that the public, when you can actually see that so and so claimed £464 to get a limousine from Terminal 1 to Terminal 3 at Heathrow. And it turns out that the people that ran the limo company were related, Never. were family, Never. to <laughs> the chat. I mean, you can walk from limo. Terminal 1 to Terminal 3 yeah. in 15 minutes, but they've got a, a, a limo. Well, I was just thinking the other Thursday when we were sitting in that bar down um, on Hollywood Road, and we seen a certain Scottish yes. minister coming out of the bar where he'd been, no names here, where he'd been sitting surrounded by women. But it's the spin you can put on it and what it's like, surrounded with all these ladies and trotting across over to obviously a nice apartment, maybe it says, and then, you know, into a nice that grey jacket. It was the end of term. It was the last yeah, night. I, I know, but, it, that had that yeah, but you can make yeah, something out Phil, of that that isn't. Phil's point is, I mean, all you had to do was miss the fact that he went into what we presumed was a residence. Yeah. Yeah. His residence in Edinburgh. And it looked kind of like you know, And he's maybe going and to get home. Yeah. Yeah. You missed that little bit out. Yeah. Right? And he's getting picked up from a pub in a limo. Yeah, that's true. So you can you make know. it out where he's surrounded by women. Ah, of course, there was all that. You know, well, well, it's probably all the staff, yeah. and they're all having a great time. And there were guys there. Yeah, no, there we, were definitely men there. Oh, yeah. No, but we would do it. You, we would sit, but then, by its definition, a lot of the time, when you're actually the staff, like in. In, a, in our group rooms, up in, I mean, you had the token mail, really, because mail just don't multitask. <laughs> if you wanted, so, I mean, and I'm sorry, but, but the, sexist. Uh, or accurate. Um, but, you know, you wanted something to done, like, oh, God, not him. Oh, oh there she is, right? So, and, and, you know, you, you know you'd get the job done. Um, so there are that by more women, and they're more sociable. So, you know, and you can make... You, you can make a connotation on anything you like there. You know, oh, look at him surrounded by I'm sorry, you, no, you just put yourself up against the wall when the revolution comes <laughs> in. Yes, well, there weren't all that many women at last night's meeting, but one, the, the first speaker, and she was the most important person there. Um, she was obviously a woman. I mean, uh, she was good, was it? Sarah, Sarah Hamilton. Hutchison. 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 And she'd been with the information commissioner's office since the start. So although she wasn't number one, she 
she really was being very helpful. She knew her stuff. Yeah. And she knew her stuff not only about the Scottish setup, but about the West well, West the UK setup, one. The UK setup and the Irish setup and the American setup. And the American one. So there'd obviously been quite a lot of work in the search gone into it. Where the she was Scot on the ball. Scotland was the almost one of the last of the democracies to to have a a Freedom of Information Act. The first one where did you say it was in Sweden? It was in the in the eighteenth century. Probably, yeah. And apparently, Sorry, 19th uh, century. Zimbabwe has one as well. <laughs> it's just not very effective. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's the same yes. here, you know. We do something here. Come in and here. collect the information. Bang. Yes, yeah, so okay, okay. But it's like we've done something original. It's it's like if you criticise the last Labour government, but we brought in the minimum wage. So, so what, what you mean? We actually started to become mainstream. By the way, it's garbage compared to most other European countries. Well, minimum I, wage. I was half expecting there to be a lot of criticism because the Labour Party have had a pop at the SNP about the Freedom of Information Act. Well, at last night's meeting. I thought there would be some criticism, but apparently there's legislation about to go through um, Parliament cutting the 30-year rule to 15. Well, it's just when you reveal the you know, cabinet papers. Papers, minutes and papers no, and be, things. But <laughs> what, what the Irish guy was saying was quite interesting was they, they had a rule that it was five years. Mm -hmm. Four years, ten months down the line, they changed it to ten years. <laughs> so, in ten years, do we expect them to change it to thirty, and then forty, and then fifty? I don't know. But I was kind of pleased to hear that it was coming down, not going up. Uh, well, yes and no. Well, mind those papers that, and all that stuff that just came out about uh, Kenya. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you know because this. Absolutely amazing attitude the British oh, is this about actually the, had. Was this know. about the Mau Mau? Yeah, the Mau Mau. Um, we love you know. It, again, it's that um, it's that Anthony Perkins syndrome. Um, it, to, to my mind, it encompasses a lot. Oh, we're lovely. We wouldn't hurt a fly after they're actually roasting people alive, castrating them, uh, starving them to death, um, all that. But we honestly, it wasn't us. It just here. We, I tell you, an what, administrative error. Tell you what, Phil, I think we better uh, draw a wheel over that. People might be having their breakfast. Yeah, I know, uh, yeah, but, but, you know, that, but that's taken 50 years or more to come out. And it's only coming out because but it's a court case. Problem. Yeah, and it is. Drawing a veil over it shouldn't be done. Yes, okay. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. Well, uh, thank you very much.